Hello and welcome to part 11 of this tutorial series. In this part we are going to talk about dependency injection and how we can leverage it using Quartz. Almost in any job you will need some sort of service that you will need to inject. Being that an email service, logging service, data access layer like entity framework etc. ASP.NET Core has built in IOC container but that won't work with Quartz out of the box. We will need to tell Quartz how to resolve the dependencies, so we have to let it know about our IOC container. In Quartz, jobs are resolved using a job factory. In order for us to inject our dependencies, we need to create a custom job factory. Let's go ahead and create a new class called ASP.NET Core Job Factory. In Quartz, a job factory has to implement the interface iJobFactory. In order to make things easier, we are going to use an existing job factory and override some functionality. The job factory we are going to use is simple job factory. Step one is to create a constructor which has a parameter iService provider, which we will be using to resolve our dependencies. Let's type that in. Step two, we need to override the new job method on the simple provider so we can provide our own logic for creating new jobs. Inside the new job method, we are going to use our service provider to resolve our jobs based on their types. We use provider that get service and use the job type to let the provider know which service it should return. If something goes wrong, we are throwing a scheduler exception, which is part of the quartz namespace with a custom message letting us know that the, something went wrong during ASP.NET Core dependency injection. Once we created our job factory, we need to tell Quartz that it should use this new job factory. To do that, let's head out to our startup.cs and in the configure method, we already have a global variable for Quartz scheduler. We do Quartz scheduler the job factory equals new ASP.NET Core job factory and we pass in the service provider so we can resolve our jobs. In order for us to inject a service in our job, we need at least to have a service. Let's create a simple email service which just outputs a message on the output window. Let's create a new folder called services. And add our service email service. The email service does nothing but just take in a receiver, subject, and body and output that to the debug window. We only ever need one instance of the email service, so we need to register it as a singleton. Now that we created our service and registered our service, we can inject it into our job. Let's head out to our job and create a constructor which has a parameter of iEmail service. Let's remove the existing code on the execute method and call our email service.send method. Once we inject our email service with our simple job, all we have to do is register our simple job in our startup.cs class. Since the instance of the simple job has to be unique every time, we need to register it as transient so it spits out a new instance every time we need it. Once that is done, now we can run our application. Let's start our job. Fast forward, we can see that the messages are being printed to the output window. So our dependency injection is working fine. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward to set it up. This way you can inject your services on your jobs and keep the code clean. 
One important thing to mention is that since we changed our job factory to work with our IOC container, your jobs have to be registered with the service provider, otherwise your jobs won't get executed because the provider that gets service that we implemented on our custom job factory won't know about the job that you are trying to get if you have not registered it with our service provider. Mm -hmm.